Hi, my name's Matt Widgery from FramePlanet.com. Today I've got a very special guest with me. This is John Christopher, he's a photographer from London. And he's up in the studio today because we were talking on YouTube the other day on one of the videos that I made about using off-camera flash with the X-Pro1. This is it floating somewhere up in the uh, mists behind us, uh, up there. And you can check that out, there we go, to see what it's all about. And I was talking in that video uh, about the, uh, the Yongnuo 603 triggers, which are these little things here. Uh, these little, little puppies here. And I was saying in that video that I'd had some problems with using these successfully with the Fuji X-Pro1, despite the fact that with the Nikons I'd had a lot of success. They were very reliable uh, little things indeed. We're going to be talking about that today because John has got some thoughts on those too. And we're also going to be introducing a new system, which I want John to, uh, to talk about now. So we've had let's, a look at this this morning. This is the Shani system. Tell, tell us more about this. It's, it's the Sh Shani system. This is the Shani SM600C for the Canon. And what I've found is that if you use it together with the Yongyu, and this is the Yongyu 622TXC, and the, uh, the receiver end, which is the, the ordinary um, Yongyu 622C, you'll be able, or I found a way, to seamlessly get the flash to work with an X-Pro1 both in manual and here's the kicker in ETTL mode. That is fantastic isn't it because I mean that's really the holy grail for Fuji photographers as we all know the absolute arsehole of trying to get a sensible system that works with TTL with our cameras. Although Fuji do have one or two little flashes that sort of work okay they're not terribly powerful they're not terribly big and they don't do that much in practical terms, especially mm. if you want to shoot events and that kind of stuff. Um, and I know that's your forte doing corporate yeah. events and that sort of things where some flash power is useful. And where we need to move very, very quickly. And sometimes our flash guns are, you know, inaccessible. We need to be able to remotely change them from where we are. Mm. And, you know, this is the only system I've found so far that's able to do exactly what I wanted to do. Do it reliably and do it well so I can pr be produced professional results when I wanted to. So talk me through the system a little bit because what, you're, what you've got here is, is some young new age triggers. Right, okay. Um, um, let, let's start for basically from the beginning really. Mm. Um, so I won't start with these, but I will start with this. It's, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a Canon off-camera flash cord and, and various bits and pieces of research indicated that if I use this on uh, my X Pro One, I'm able to maintain ETTL with, with my Shani, with, 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 with my Shani, and oh, there was a, as well. yeah, and there, um, and we've got a, a, another kind of little um, surprise for everybody. It's a, a Nissan i40 Blackbird, which I bought over with me because I bought this at the same time that I bought my my X Pro One. Because I had a look on the, the offerings that was coming from Fuji, and I must admit, I wasn't too. <laughs> they not do, really. they, there's some room to go, I think. Yes, I think if the, 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 yeah. the, the, it, the, it seems that with the X system, Fuji, I hope you're listening, the Flash <laughs> was a afterthought. <laughs> an afterthought. Yep. So, anyway, this is, I, I found this is beautifully built. And the build quality on these, I mean, it's yeah, fantastic. I, I read a lot about these online and they look very good. Um, I had no idea, because you can't tell from the pictures at all. No, not really. Like. I was thinking it was going to be something akin to maybe the Omnuos, yeah. or something like that in build quality. It isn't, it's way better. I would actually say this feels nicer in the hand than the, the, the high-end Nikons I used to, like the, the SB900s and things like that. The build quality is lovely, it really, really is nice. Um, tell us about sort of flash pattern things because it is a small unit. Um, tell it, me about flash pattern. Tell me about a, um, the number of flashes you get as well compared to a bigger unit. Its flash power would be very very close to uh, a Canon 550, a Canon 580. Well, okay. um, at, at full power, given the size that it is, it it's does designing. pack. A, it does pack a point. Hold it up um, next to the next to the Shani because the Shani is about the size of you know what what you get from your standard you know Canon or Nikon flash. I mean it, you know standard flash size. It is a very dinky little unit, and uh, I'm a big fan of dinky small little things yeah. you can carry around. Yeah, and and and, 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 and it's, I mean I'm, I mean it just looks just looks better. Doesn't just it? looks better and yeah. feels better, and you know what I mean. So it's it's an it's an it's a nice bit of kit. 
okay. as what what we used to call it. But anyway, mm. I found that if you get this off and to use it off camera, mm. using it with one of these was nigh on perfect. Mm. Um, and I used it with uh, a couple of my cannons as well. Um, and you know, it actually beautiful. Got it off camera. Um, just gonna. So this is really a clever little thing. I mean, for, for the sake of the price of that cord, which is going to be what you know, twenty quid on yeah. or something, you can get TTL off camera when you think. Yeah, it. and it's just there. Does the business. Um, very lovely. Nice. It's, it's, yeah. it's very very nice. So it's a, it's a nice simple way. Um, of getting your camera, your flash off camera and still maintaining it, it, it yeah. doesn't cost very much, it doesn't weigh very much, much. it's perfect for weddings. If you're the sort of person that likes to bounce flash off walls and ceiling and things like that at receptions, it's ideal because you can be reaching around with that flash to find some white bit of wall somewhere and get the flash where you want yeah. it. The TTL is going to look after everything for you. You're not worried about having optical vision if you're using like optical trigger or anything like that. You know, it's, it's, not, it's nicely hard wide into yeah. the camera and the two speak to each other seamlessly. What we ne now, what we're trying to do now is to move away and to go truly wireless. And this is where I came across a bit of a problem. As a matter of fact, I came a bit of a problem even before that. <laughs> and, and, and it was all to do with setting up your X-Pro1 to accept a flash. Mm. If anybody's ever tried this, it, I mean, there are so many things with the, with the Fiji system which aren't that easy to set up. They, well, they try and trick you into not having flash wherever possible. You can't have uh, the right. There is many methods. There, 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 there are there are three caveats before <laughs> we move on anywhere else. Everybody must know these three caveats, and hopefully, you'll be able to put something up. In oh, the we'll, in we'll the right in the gap between, in, in the, in the gap between yeah. and you'll yeah. be able to see. Or if there is room between the right. lines, scroll on the bottom. So the, the first caveat, oh brother, <laughs> uh, the the first caveat is that you must have your camera not yeah. on silent mode. If we get that right, if we get it in silent mode, um, it won't work. It won't work. No. Why it won't why? work? We don't know that. No, but it's, it's you will find it in the manual if you read read the manual and you pop it. And this applies to twenty flash. The second caveat is that you must have your drive mode in single. Can't be in continuous or what's the other mode? Are we talking about drive mode in terms of uh, like shots, like number of shots or yeah. in terms of your, focus? Your, it's, it's, well, it's focus. Focus, focus. Right, so, see. It's, so it's this little button just there and it's kind of M, M so is manual, for manual, C is for continuous and, and C is for single. Have to have right. it in single. So it has to be in single. If you put it on continuous autofocus, it ain't gonna you're work. Out of luck. Right? Right. But the, these these two caveats apply to all flash boons, both Fuji and anything else you, you want to plonk your notch. You want to put your chamois on there, you want to put your right. cannon, same thing. The third caveat though. Ooh. This is the real stinger. This <laughs> is a stinger. You this, never know about Right? It. This <laughs> is a stinger, right? This is a stinger. Now, if you want any other flash gun to work with your Fuji, you're going to have to write it. <laughs> yep. It's not I on. said the word <laughs> right. <laughs> is it the comments flowing in now? Right. Fuji calls it forced. Forced flash. Now, to access the force flash menu, you need to be able to get something to talk to the X-Pro1 to let you in. Mm. And I thought, up until half an hour ago, that any Fuji flash gun would let you in. I was wrong. Yes, unfortunately Fuji like to um, play a, a little trick on you when doing these things. Mm. If you've got, uh, like I have, and I know a lot of people have got um, an X-T1 and, uh, and an X-Pro1, and the X-Pro1, as you know, doesn't come with a flash of any mm. sort, or a pop-up flash, nor does the X-T1, and by the time the X-T1 came out, um, Fuji took pity on us and said, alright, you can have a little sort of pop-up flash doodah, um, which is this, it's the EF X8, and you can throw that on top of your X-T1, and yep. you can get a little, little tiny flash. I mean, it's not that great, but it's there. 
Now, we thought, aha, we've got a Fuji Flash now, we can use this, because you need to have a Fuji Flash... To access the menu. To access the menu, to get to the bit where you can turn the yeah, Flash to, on. Which is called Flash Mode. Yeah. So you get to Flash Mode, and then you use the drop-down menu, will take you to Flash Mode. Yeah. The one that you're going to, you're, you must apply is the Forced Flash. Mm. Now, we know this doesn't work. We've tried it, it, it ain't going to let you in. It'll only work on the X2 one. So if you've got one of these kicking around, don't try with the X2 one. Right. You can, but it won't get you very far. But this will. This is the Nissan. Right. This Nissan, we've tested it, blah, blah, blah. I've tested it even before it came here. You pop it in, you access the, the mode, you do your changes, you save the change, you come out, and then you're all good to go. So at that point, you, you put this on purely for the sake of, of setting up for Yes. After and, that, you can... And then, and then you can do it. But if you want to like second curtain flash, or to access any other mode within that window, you need to be carrying around something that speaks sweetly <laughs> to your X Pro ones. So it's either one of these or one of the bigger flash units, like the F20, yes, the F20, whatever. whatever it is. What, so, whatever yeah. that came, whatever, whatever the flash guns that came out um, with the X Pro one that when it was introduced, and as far as I'm concerned, there's three. The only other third party one that I know is this one, which is the Nissan. And I would truly advise you get this because it is way, way better than the other three. Um, but Whatever you do, you'll need something to get into that menu, or your off-camera flash days are... <laughs> it's going to be very cut short. Very, very <laughs> quickly. So, once you've set up your force flash and you're ready to go, um, let's talk very briefly, because this may well be part two, or right. part one or two, because we, we, we set all that stuff, and, and John, in, when, he, when we were talking on, on email before, before we set this mm. video up, we were talking about the 603s particularly, because it was in yes. that video. And he'd done this at home. He got the 603 triggers, these things. He'd got his Nissin uh, IQ 40 thing, and he yeah. put it all up. And he, he put this on top of the Expo Pro. Pro and one. it works like a dream. Absolute clockwork without missing a beat. Not a beat. I, I, I used it literally, literally for six hours straight, and it worked like a dream. However, having driven 50 miles up to my studio <laughs> and said, look, look, Matt, I'll show you how it's done. This is easy. <laughs> um, talk us through what happened next. What was weird, we, 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 it took a while to get it set up. We got it set, set up. Set up. We got it working. And then for some unknown reason, it stopped. It just stopped. I, I thought it might be a good idea because I, I, maybe it was a, a little bit of sort of presence or maybe I was just kind of like unsure about how hmm. it was So it was all working and we were firing a shot after shot after shot. Didn't miss a beat. And then I said, all right, John, try turning it off and turning it on again, which we did. Which we did. So we switched it off, counted it off. We switched it off, counted it off, we took it on, rebooted everything from, from, from zero. From to, so rebooted the camera, rebooted the flash, blah, 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 and it just didn't and work. Nothing. But we didn't change any settings, did we? No, no settings at all. We changed on the flash, on the trigger, trigger on the camera. Camera, body. nothing. Nothing. It's all we did, switch it off, switch it on, fuck all. So now, the, the, at this point, we thought, okay, right, we, we, we decided we might. Yeah, we just decided to give up on it. Yeah, we pressed that right, button. We pressed that button. So, the, so the two main systems that we now definitely know, well, we've introduced one already. So, this I mean, one with so, the, so, uh, so we've. Uh, um, Matt's, already, Matt's already shown you the one with the, the PC cord that you can access the PC um, sync. On, on your camera and do it old style, old yep. school. This is you school. <laughs> Same That's thing, it. but you retain ETTL. If if your flash can do ETTL. Yeah. But there is a, a proviso on that one. If you, it, it will be able to do ETTL on with this with this flash gun. Now we're going to go wireless. Now I've used the Yongyu 622 system for about two years with my Canons and they are just, it's, it's a brilliant system. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant system. Mm. It's reliable, it's consistent and it does what I want it to do. Um, and even with, even when we're talking about just the bare bones, you know, I mean, this is the basic dumb system. Um, 
the 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 with the, so young, the 622. Yeah. So with the six twenty two, if you've got Canon like five D Mark II, you'll be able to, to change the both the the flash power and the ratio and the zoom from the back of your camera using one of these, right? And you'll be able to do it an awful lot cheaper than buying a six hundred. Yeah. Right. Uh, or some pocket wizards. Pocket or wizards, double blah blah blah. These yeah. blow away. So, so tell me what, what's the what's the price of one of those? If you wanted to get a couple of those, right, things, okay. how do they work out? Right, so for the basic for the basic kit, right, this young U it's the S N six hundred. This is the Shani. The the Shani. Yeah, this so. is the Shani. I, I did try, matter of fact I did try the Young U and I didn't have much success with it to tell you the bone industry. And I'm a little bit suspect about the build quality. But when I bought this one I was just blown away. Oh, was I blown away? I mean, first, it looks so much like a Canon um, um, 600 RF EX, which is about, I mean, when it came out, it was about 600 notes. No, no, no wonder they called it the 600. Um, so I bought this, and I thought, um, I'd also read uh, rumours that it would work with the, the basic um, Yongyu um, 622 c and the rumours were correct. Mm. It works beautifully, absolutely beautiful. So I've been using these. They've been my workhorses morning, noon, and night, and they really do the business. Um, and this, this, I mean, what do these retail for? You should be able to get one of these for sixty quid. Wow. Um, this is the basic one. It hasn't got any radio, Google, and blah 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 in there. Um, it's just the, the basic ETTL speed light. But actually, for this, I mean, this is what you want. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. What we're using is this is the really exciting thing about this. These sixty twos communicate TTL through. Yes. So when you have this, and you don't need to have the one with the radio trigger in this because it's going to use the communication through from the Young Nuo sixty two mm. through into this. This. And give you not only wireless control if you want to do manual wireless control over it, but, but manual. Fully manual, up and down, whatever you want. But whatever. Also, you, zoom, zoom, and TTL. Yeah, all of it from these two things. Now you would have thought that Shani, being a totally separate company from Yongyu, being a totally separate company from Fuji, would be able to communicate. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> they do. So also, but there is a caveat with this as well. Like this, this, all, this, this should be called like the caveat show with flashlights. Right. Oh, oh yes. there is a slight pickup in in the rug with this as well, isn't there? Hi guys, sorry to interrupt. I know you're in the middle of watching the film, but I thought I'd just warn you. The next little bit is going to be blurry. It's going to be out of focus because um, I got to the end of the time limit that you're allowed to record for on these cameras. Got up, reset the cameras, and somehow in doing that. I screwed up the focus for the second part of the video. Don't know how, didn't touch anything, I didn't think I'd touch anything, but somehow or other, it managed to uh, like just miss focus altogether. So the next five minutes or so, like the, till the end of the video, is going to be out of focus, it is going to be blurry. You can still kind of see things, but it's definitely the focus is disturbingly off. It's my mistake and I apologize for that. Anyway, please feel free to stop watching the video if that really annoys you, but if you do carry on, I hope you get something out of the rest of the film. Talk to you later, guys. Another caveat. Yeah. Another caveat. Now, I've there's loads of you out there who've already got bought into the Canon system, and you've got Canon flash guns. I've got Canon flash guns. Um, the ones that I've got, I've got three Canon 580 um, EXs Mark IIs, and I decided to try. You know, because I found that the Shani works, and it's a Canon you know, dedicated flash gun. Yeah. I thought common sense it would dictate that the the five eighties would work as well. Yeah, but what we've learned so far from Flash and Fuji is that common sense doesn't really play. No, 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 <laughs> no. You have to test first and look Yeah, you're right. And which which I did do. And th there is good news and there is bad news. <laughs> I'll start with the good news first. Excellent. Right. What's the good news, John? Good news is it works beautifully manual it does exactly what you want you to do the bad news is <laughs> forget about ETTL right it will fire in ETTL but it'll blow anybody stupid enough to stand in front of the flash gun <laughs> um, so we're talking about serious radiation burns here 
So uh, I tried it again and again and again, and it was consistent. It just blew everything. So it's out. just giving it max power. With every max power. You put in. Bang! It would be blowing it out. No. Now, I simply do not understand why this is the case. Mm, yeah. I also tried it with the the cord. So with the off cam Canon off camera um, cord connected to my X Pro One, connected to the 580 EX, mm. and had exactly the same result, right. which simply doesn't make sense. So, you know, I mean, you have mm -hmm. got an option there. If you've got your 580s, they're brilliant, use them, use them in manual um, uh, only. Mm. Now, both me and Matt, we appeal to anybody who's watching this, if you've got the same equipment as me, give it a try, if you've got different results, let us know because yeah. we need to know these things. That's it. If anybody's figured this out, I mean, because you know, there's a lot of people like yourself, John, who have been Canon users over the years and have transferred over to the Fuji systems that are going to have these legacy flashes, and they're brilliant flashes. Oh, so yes. If there's a way to um, keep them from gathering dust uh, or ending up on eBay, then happy days. And yeah. Carry on using them because it's so just to go and buy a whole bunch mm, of buy, buy the, and, you know. and like I say, if, if it works, it works. And we might be missing something in the way we're setting it up and blah 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 because that's how the Fuji system works once you've thought that you've figured it out Fuji throws another curveball <laughs> listen John thanks very much for joining me where can people find your, your stuff yeah you can find me um, on my website it's um, www.events-horizon.co.uk um, I'm there I'm just kind of in, in the process of kind of relaunching myself after the, you know bad two years but whatever I'm back and back. yes <laughs> it's, and it's the uh, only thing I'll be back yeah whatever <laughs> so yes so I hope this works for you if you've got any problems or if you find any more caveats mm. that we should be talking about we've already know that with the, the XT one there's a, a, a caveat regarding the... Regarding the electronic shutter. Yeah. So, um, the, those of you that have upgraded your uh, firmware on your X-T1 to version 4, I think even possibly the 3 point something, and have now got the electronic shutter in there, if you're trying to get flash to sync with your camera, it won't if you're in that electronic shutter mode or if you're in the, the, the combination mode. So there's three shutter modes now on that camera. There's fully ordinary mechanical shutter, there's uh, one which blends from mechanical up to one eight thousandth of a second or one four thousandth of a second, whatever the highest shutter speed is on there, and then it'll it'll transfer automatically over to electronic shutter, and then there's fully electronic, which is silent all the way through. If your camera is set up to either mechanical slash electronic or fully electronic shutter, you can't get flash to work. You've been <laughs> warned, folks. You've been warned. You've been warned. <laughs> so. so John will be back for part two um, at some point soon. We'll record that. Yeah, um, we're, we're so looking to try and solve the problem of why Young Yu's dumbest flash is truly dumb. Truly dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye. Thanks, John. <laughs>